I'm Massimo Guarini and I'm CEO and Creative Director at Ovosonico. Right, so the, the, the challenge is, you've got to sum up your game in 30 seconds and I'm going to be watching the timer. So I'm going to cut you off at the, the 30 second point so you can't go over. All right. I'll give you a, a five what seconds. What if I take less? Well, if you take less, well. Do I win can, something? And you can fill it and you can sing Can I go? <laughs> you can leave, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Right, okay. so right. on M5, four, three, two, one, go. She's lost. She wants her mummy. She's holding in her hand, hand a purple heart shaped balloon. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, there you go. It's done. <laughs> there you go. 13 seconds. That, that's that's, is that's that, what I Is actually, that a record? World record? Yeah? <laughs> how, how much was it? <laughs> it was about, yeah, 13 seconds. 13, okay. So, you wow. Like 13 no, actually, that's, that's actually the, the words I would use to, 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 to describe Murasaki Baby. No yeah. more than that, because I really want the game to be able to speak for itself, right? Yeah, okay. And since it's an emotional approach to gaming, it's an emotional game design, I would say, uh, it's very important to, you know, just let the player experience the whole thing by himself. It, there's nothing complicated, it's just, you know, there's a baby there, she's lost, she really wants her mummy, and she's holding a balloon in her hand, just grab her hand, that's it, and, and, and see what happens. It's all about you as a human being and the character on the screen to be connected, to become connected, to, you know, establish an emotional bond. It's all about that, so there's no point in trying to describe the game more than, you know, I don't know, 10 words. That's really not what I want to do and, and, and give total freedom to the player to have this experience and to, you know, just enjoy, uh, sound kind of weird, but this kind of relationship with, with, with a fictional digital character. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. Where did it come from? I mean, was that just like kind of one of these late nights just it, it, drinking whiskey in a basement somewhere? Yeah, it's and whiskey, <laughs> LSD and, and, you know, um, just like Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Sounds like a good night. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah. It comes from also um, an image that I saw on a train when I was on a business trip. I saw this little girl um, holding a, really a heart-shaped balloon in her hand and I was just like amazed by the beauty of that scene. And probably it just came from that vision, visually speaking, right? And, and, and I just thought, I was, I was traveling, right? So I was not even playing games. <laughs> I was just like trying to stay awake. <laughs> and, and I just thought about how cool it would be to actually be able to grab her hand and guide her through, you know, an imaginary nightmarish world. And that's where the core concept came from. It's, that's it. And, and that's why the touch um, approach was and is the, the core at the base of the, the whole game and and the fact that in the game the final game the game mechanics are all, all about also switching and changing the background um, the Vita was a natural fit for it I never actually start from the platform I always start from the content when I when I have new ideas and then it's like uh, the, fla the platform comes up automatically in order to fit the content so it, it was a perfect marriage, I think. It's, it, it, it's just a Vita game. It, it's just perfect for that. So your last game, Shadows of the Damned, right? right. So how, you've gone from this huge studio yeah. to set up your own. Yeah. I mean, how did that come about? Well, um, you know, I left Japan and, and I, I had a really great experience with, at Grasshopper Manufacturing in Tokyo. It was really amazing. I learned a lot from, from, from the guys there and working with Mikami-san was scary. <laughs> working with Suda-san was sweet and, and working with Yamaoka-san was really great. But at a certain point I had to leave Japan for personal reasons, right? And I, and I went back to my home country and I said, like, it's time for me to set up something by myself because um, honestly, I was kind of bored about <laughs> the video game scene as a whole. And I was attracted by what the Indies were doing at that time. And, and I thought it was just about time to do something and to try and, you know, to, to, to put myself on the front line and saying, okay, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If I fail, that's it, probably it's, it's going to be over for me. And, and that motivation along with the inner desire of trying to expand a little bit more the medium into something that it can be enjoyed also by non-teenagers and, 
you know, people who actually have no direct interest in shooting at zombies or killing people or, you know, big explosions. That was my motivation to try to express myself a little bit more. And now it's time to do it. Technology is accessible, uh, publishers are open to, you know, new stuff. And it's just a perfect time, you know, for, for this kind of renaissance of video games as a whole. And, and that's it. I just want, you know, to keep the company small, uh, to keep communication flowing and to try to challenge convention as much as possible. Not because it's my dogma, that's just because of who I am probably. I, I, I do like to, to experiment, to take some risk, and as long as there's somebody who, who is willing to, to embark with me on this risk, I'm, I'm in. We're with you. Great. So, Sarah, it was Suda51 that said it was dark, right? Yes. He called your game dark. He did? Yeah. He went Oh, yeah. So it is. that's Suda51, right? Yes. Calling yes. your game dark. dark. So, and he also asked me, where's the violence? <laughs> and I said, just wait, just play the game. It's, it's, it's violent, right? I mean, it can be, but it's, it's it, in a different terms, definitely than Shadows of the Dam. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, this is like, Suda's known for these kind of wacky games that are really yes. dark. And for Suda to call it dark, I mean, that must be a proud moment to be dark. <laughs> I Suda. guess so. I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. I, I'm. I don't know. I, it's probably because I'm, again, a sort of lonely, secluded child in my in my childhood, and and I have this dark thing inside myself somehow. I I don't know. I I like to see Murasaki Baby as as a mix, as a kind of sur surreal and grotesque mix between darkness, light, cuteness, and you know, frightening, you know, disgusting things all together and that's you know it's all about the contrast I, I, I very much like the contrast it's, it's like in music right when you keep the same volume all the time you know you're not, you're not gonna trigger many emotions but when, when the dynamics are going up and down that's where the contrast is and that's where you know you react emotionally to things and that's the same for every medium it's the same for music for movies for games for art for pictures anything and and that's it I mean it's I don't know why you call it dark <laughs> Right, we'll, we'll play a game of ifs. What, sorry? A game of ifs. So it's going to be if... You like to challenge me. Yeah, I like to challenge you. Like keep you on your toes. Okay. So if Murasaki Baby was an animal, what animal would it be? And why? Platypus. Why would it be a platypus? Because the platypus is grotesque. Okay. And, and funny, sweet, cute at the same time, and ugly at the same time. That's why. Okay. If it was a colour, what colour would it be? Uh, purple. Okay. Why? Because Murasaki means purple in Japanese. Oh, right, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's quite a simple one. Uh, if it was a song, what song would it be? <laughs> that's a nice one. Something from Sigur Ross. Okay. Uh, why, why is that? I mean... Uh, lures, noise. Okay. If it was a car? Um, I, I was about to say the Fiat Cinquecento. Really? Yes, yes, really. Why, because it's small, compact and... Yeah. And Stylish, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a symbol and, 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 and Lupin was driving it, right? Okay, okay yeah. That's it, okay. that's it, that's why. Right, and just to wrap up, can you say when the game is out to the camera? Would that be amazing? No. No, no they, they, they don't want me to say that. Sorry, because, no. sorry, 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 sorry. I, didn't, I didn't mean exact date, I meant... Period. Well, like it's it's, that, it's out there on the internet, anyways. It's 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 going to be us some, somehow sometimes next year. Next year, that's it.